everybody, Bob Pickett. We're visiting with Justin Moore right now. Justin, we just watched it in our lounge. What a great performance. Thanks, man. That was fun. That's a, that's a cool cool thing you've got in there. Now, I realize it's a small crowd because you're used to opening up for, you know, Hank Jr. and Brooks and Dunn and Leonard Skinner and ZZ Top. That's pretty impressive for somebody who's, who's new on the music scene. We've been fortunate, man. We've been very, very lucky. Obviously, growing up, I was huge fans of all those guys, and then when I decided music was what I wanted to do, uh, I've become even a bigger fan of their music. But yeah, we got to go out on the Rowdy Friends tour. Uh, we did half of it. I think Otto did the other half, and uh, we went out with Trace Atkins for a while, and then we got to do some stuff with uh, Brooks and Dunn's Easy Top, which was which was very very cool. So now who's who's more rowdy, Hank Jr. or Leonard Skinner? You know what? They were they were all pretty settled down. I wish I had some good gossip to give you, but <laughs> I, I had told somebody the other day I was prepared to I would have taken a shot of pure gasoline if Hank Jr. would have offered it to me. <laughs> Tell us about the first time you met Hank Jr. How was that? Were you nervous? Absolutely, it was actually pretty ridiculous, man. We were out for, for uh, about two or three weeks before I, I got to meet him, and because he flies in and out every show, and so finally. I just jumped off stage one night after we got done playing, and I stepped in his meet and greet line. Because <laughs> I was like, I'm not letting this opportunity go by and not meet Hank Jr. And luckily, his post has walked up to me. He's like, what, what exactly are you doing? Because people are standing there going, wait a minute, weren't you just on stage? On stage? And uh, So uh, he, he introduced me to him, but it was very cool, man. I I. I didn't. You never know what to expect meeting a hero, and you're always crossing your fingers that it's going to be good. And and he he said, I told him how much his music meant to me, obviously. And and he said, Well, I'll tell you something, Hoss. He said I had a kid out here doing this with me not too long ago by the name of Alan Jackson, and then I had another one by the name of Kenny Chesney. So keep doing what you're doing. And he said things are going to turn out all right. So which was the Perfect. It was, it was the greatest thing he could have said to me. So. Wow. And then I went up on his bus a couple of times. And was he on the bus? We talked about there? turkey hunting oh. and stuff like that. So it was very cool. Very cool. Now you're from a small town in Arkansas. I thought I was from a small town in West Texas, but <laughs> your town, it's got like an alley and a couple streets. What's the population of your town? That's, that's the reaction everybody gives it. Uh, 272 right now. Wow. Was, I don't know when the last time they did it. You know count, but uh, I know they ain't changed the sign since I left six years ago, <laughs> but uh, I wouldn't know that that was the population, but the signs in my grandparents' front yard, and uh, so yeah, yeah, there's two churches, you go to one or the other, there's a little grocery hardware, gas station thing, yeah, a post office, and, and a school, and kindergarten through 12th grade's on the same the same campus. Well, now with a town that small, I mean, where did you hear the music when you were growing up? You know what? Uh, we were right in between. We were lucky. We were, I lived in a small town, but we were right in between Hot Springs and Little Rock. Right, so you so can't we, listen to it. We had both of those. Uh, you know, we were 40, 50 miles from, from either either place. But, you know, I, a lot of people go toward country music for different reasons, but I always did because it you know, explained my way of life that I was growing up in, you know. and um, Yeah, yeah I, I always listen to country. Somebody was asking me the other day, Do you, don't you remember this song, this old uh, rock song or this song. I was like, no, I, I don't. I, I literally listened to country music and some southern rock growing up. That was, wow. that was pretty much it. So Is there really a video of you when you were two years old singing a George Strait song with a fake oh, microphone? Good grief. <laughs> and has that ended up being on YouTube? Because it probably <laughs> it will. will end up being there, with knowing my label. But uh, yeah, we uh, my parents I, they bought me a toy ukulele and we had a, a little TV stand in our living room and. And I would sing into the corner of the TV stand, and it was, use it as a mic stand, and, yeah. and play, play on the guitar on a ukulele. And, but I, I was singing George Strait and, and uh, Dwight Yoakam, guitars wow. and Cadillacs. That was that was the my main guy there when I was two or three years old, and, and then he's still my favorite artist. So. It was pretty cool, but uh, the most embarrassing tape we had was <laughs> I was seven or eight and had a <laughs> my parents talked me into joining this talent show at uh, at school, but they didn't have a, a division for somebody as young as me. It was just high school kids, and and I was wanting a pair of uh, basketball shoes or something that they wouldn't buy for me because they were too expensive, and and so they taught me. They said if you if you Enter this contest, we'll buy you these Jordans or whatever. They're Jordan, yeah. You know, and uh, and so uh, so I did, and I ended up winning. But I did, 
Thank you, Breaky Heart. I had a whole dance. Every time well, you, you want to demonstrate the dance right now? Yeah, I would, but I would probably lose my record then. <laughs> and, and all all the fans that I've I've uh, been able to acquire, but uh, it was uh, that one will probably end up on YouTube too because I know uh, some, we some of the some of the people at my label have uh, have access to it. So. Speaking of your label, when is your debut album coming up? They got a release date yet? Uh, first quarter next year. We're still working on it. Um, we we're looking at, at January, February, you know, maybe early March, something like that. It's just man, really for me, we've just been so busy. We've been on the road so much this year, which is a good thing, and, and been playing so much. And I moved to town and started writing six years ago. So it, really, the biggest holdup was was deciding. Uh, you know what 10 or 12 songs we want to put on my album right. because I've, I've written so many that I feel really good about and it's just kind of what is the best way to uh, introduce people to my music and we, but we've, we've kind of got the, we've gotten there so we're uh, we're going to go in and finish it uh, here in the next month or so and, and then you know hopefully get it out in, in early next year so. well we're looking forward to hearing it man thank you best success I appreciate it Justin Moore <laughs> thanks guys